find a lot of ergonomics today, um, but I also want to encourage you guys, um, you know, this is everyone's, everyone's workstation accommodations right now are going to be different. So if you guys have specific questions about your exact workspace, please don't hesitate to leave them in the Q&A so we can answer them as we go. Uh, but a few things before we even get into setup and posture, we need to really address what is our new normal routine. Um, and I can't stress enough that for a lot of us, we need to figure out what our existing routine was when we were in the workplace and trying to mimic that as much as we can as we actually now set up our new offices at home. So what that really means is figuring out a schedule and trying to normalize it as best as you can. So if that means that, you know, you normally have morning meetings with your team, try to end with that as well at home uh, in the morning and really try to figure out, you know, separating errands and tasks because it's tempting to do that. Uh, but we really want to stress that trying to mimic a schedule as best as you can will definitely help you in the long run. Um, sorry, I'm so used to hitting the arrow key, but I have to manually push this button. So it might be slow at changing slides. Uh, so in terms of our new corporate quarters, as you can see, everyone's used to their new office. Uh, there's, there's, you know, plenty of options. You know, you can check out your little cubicle in your bedroom or set up a little home office in your living room. Uh, or you could be like some that I've been hearing already where they're just basically working everywhere and kind of testing it out. Uh, I am highly going to suggest that you need to find one to maximum two workspaces and try to stick to that. Uh, there's a huge reason for that. Um, you know, obviously physically, there's going to be a lot of changes that your body is going to experience. And some might argue that the change is good. Uh, however, on my end, I really do recommend uh, that we actually find ideal places uh, and stick to one or two so that you're not drowning your work life and blending, or sorry, you're not drowning in, in your work life and your personal life is not kind of falling into that. So we want to have that distinct separation so that you can actually have work-life balance and figure out a nice complement. And even if that means you live in a current, you know, one bedroom condo, you know, really try to figure out where you want to set yourself up. And I know Dr. Hack, you were mentioning, you know, to us in our, in our call too, just about how you feel about um, people working in their bedroom. Did you want to touch on, on that? Sure, absolutely. I can talk about that now. Um, one of the biggest things that um, that I've seen patients do who are, currently work from home or have always worked from home um, is sometimes make the mistake of using their bedrooms as a workspace. Um, this becomes problematic in patients who have or, or people who have difficulty with sleep to start with. Um, so while there may be some people who have no problems working from their bed and having issues with sleep, um, sleep is such an important part of our overall health. Um, I mean, I, I really believe that sleep is the foundation of everything. Um, that if sleep is an issue, if it's difficulty falling asleep, if you're waking up often at night, um, I really encourage people not to use their bedroom as a workspace. Um, my tagline has always been, your bedroom should be for sleep and sex only. Um, don't bring TV um, and don't bring your work into, into your bedroom. Um, I if, sleep the box, if you love Dr. Hack for saying that right now. <laughs> Um, so my advice is to keep, is to, it's ideally to keep um, work out of your bedroom. A hundred percent. And you know what? And, and for those of you that absolutely need to like roll out of bed and get a couple of like, you know, stress emails out of the way, I do have some tips for that, but definitely, you know, that is a temporary solution. So we'll touch on that in this with you. Um, okay. So what are some common uh, ergonomic uh, injuries that you might be prone to in the office or at home they're really quite similar uh, only now at home they can be intensified uh, so that you know really is the similar things that you would see if you're working at your office neck pain tension headaches jaw pain TMJ is a huge stress uh, contributing uh, issue that people will find is exasperated under stress and working from home uh, low back pain um, wrist pain especially with now not having proper ergonomic setups. So we're seeing everything under the sun right now and uh, hopefully a couple of the hacks that we the hacks that we give you, sorry, Dr. Hack. <laughs> Hopefully a couple of the hacks that we have for, for you today <laughs> will uh, will help you with those uh, with those injuries. Uh, so in terms of figuring out what to attack, now everyone has different uh, job requirements. Some people are on the phone 90% of the time. Some are on com multiple computers, uh, you know, over the course of their day. I would say if we're trying to tackle, you know, the biggest pressing issues that are causing you pain or discomfort, let's first tackle what you're spending the majority of your time on. So I would say dividing your day or your job into, into chunks. So for example, like I mentioned, as a chiropractor, 
I used to be 80-20. Uh, now I'm like 100% on the computer, uh, you know, with a little bit of phone in between. So once we figure out what that majority of the issue is for you, then, you know, it's easy for us to kind of figure out what should we fix first and what should we take on for you. Um, so for most people, that is monitor and phone use. Uh, now, some of you are trying to emulate your old workstation setups with multiple you know, monitor screens. And for those who don't have more than one monitor, I've been, I've been getting a lot of like emails from my patients showing me that they've set up a tablet as one screen and they've got their laptop as another and then their desktop as their third screen. I think that's really innovative. However, I do actually uh, highly recommend, and if you look at that picture here with the, the two monitors, you wanna keep them level. Um, that's extremely important because you wanna change, you wanna minimize how much change of neck angle you're going through, especially if there's a lot of shifting or dominance of task to one side. So if you're using, you know, the monitor on the left about 60% of the time, and then you're, you know, you're shifting your, your head up to another monitor that's either higher or lower, that will definitely contribute to um, neck restrictions or pain um, for sure. Uh, also for people who need to chat on their phone. Um, you know, I don't want to see a whole lot of this. This is definitely uh, guaranteed in my office when we reopen. So I definitely recommend that you uh, consider headsets just like Dr. Hack's wearing. You can wear, you know, good old headphones. Come up with something that makes sense for you. And then on the last screen, I don't know if my chat box is hiding this here. Let me just close this down. Uh, you'll see that there is actually a document holder as an option as well. For some of you who are using multiple uh, multiple uh, items to do your work. So whether that is actual physical documents, data entry, like whatever that might be for you, you, you definitely want to consider a document holder. And that can also sub in as holding your laptop or sorry, your um, iPad, if you are using that as an additional monitor. So you can definitely get creative and, and document holders are, you know, pretty inexpensive. You can get one for as little as eight to $10. And most places are still shipping these on same day. So uh, definitely take advantage of some of these products because they will, for sure help you. Um, so we're all gonna pause and, and do a quick little exercise. So a lot of you have asked me about monitor uh, considerations and, and so we just touched upon monitor levels. So we obviously want our eye level at the monitor, but not many of you know what the distance of that monitor should be. So I want all of you to just extend your hand out. And when you extend your hand out, you should be able to comfortably touch your monitor. Now, if you find that you can't reach your monitor and need to lean forward, the chances are is that you're, you're really gonna have to have a lot of visual strain to see your monitor. Uh, and it's also gonna attribute to not, some, not very great um, mechanics in your posture. Uh, similarly, if your arm is bent and you're, you're pretty much already touching your monitor, uh, you're definitely too close. So you're somebody that you know, will end up having to be doing this, which uh, is great as a close up, but definitely not, uh, not very conducive to uh, you know, your eyes and can put a lot of tension and issues for your neck and shoulder at place. So you definitely wanna think about setting up your monitor so that your fingers are touching your monitor. Okay, so hopefully that was a good little tip so far and that's something that all of us can work on literally right now. Now, uh, going into um, a couple of other things. So another, another ideal must do today, all of us can kind of accomplish this right away, is if you're unsure about your work setup, if you're able to comfortably maintain a 90 degree angle, so if you look at the, the woman here on the right, you can see that there's a little you know, 90 degree uh, uh, mark listed here, you can see that her elbow is comfortably, you know, in line perpendicular to her shoulder. So that is definitely an ideal angle. If you're unable to achieve that in your current setup, meaning, you know, you're, you're far too bent or you're too close or, you know, your, your monitor, sorry, your uh, keyboard is too low on your lap, you are more likely to be putting a lot of excessive strain, which will lead to more shoulder and, um, neck issues uh, as a result. So those are those are uh, two so far. And a third is also just looking at, uh, I know this mentions, this, this slide mentions mostly upper, but you can also look at her legs. Uh, similar concept, if you can maintain a perpendicular angle between thigh and leg, uh, also something that will really set you up comfortably. And we'll talk about what you can use to achieve that in just a moment. Um, okay, so some of you have asked me and told me that, you know, your workstations just don't exist at home. Uh, you know, you're making do on a sofa or you're making do on, like I said, I mean, as much as Dr. Hack said, on a bed, but you shouldn't be uh, because that's where you have sex and sleep. So <laughs> if you do need to work on a sofa, 
hopefully it's temporary, but I, I have a couple of links here and I'm not endorsing any products on any platform. I just wanted to give you some examples. Um, I'm currently using a C table for this presentation. Sorry, my computer's frozen, but C tables or side tables are great. They're pretty inexpensive. You can find them in many different retailer stores. Uh, and these are great because it'll at least help bring your monitor up to um, eye level height, because if you put it on your lap, you're gonna end up having to flex your neck forward, which is quite uncomfortable and will lead to, I can guarantee you, lead to a lot of excessive neck strain. Um, and then the other one here is for those that are working on their bed, again, a C table is a good option if you just needed to place it at the side of your bed so it forces you to physically sit up on your bed because ideally your, your spine cannot handle as well, working on a bed cannot handle the angles. It's too soft uh, and it won't allow you to reach those 90 degrees that I mentioned. But a quick little hack, if, oh, sorry guys, a quick little hack if you absolutely find that you need to do some work on your bed. For some of you that live in a studio, uh, you know, you can also look for laptop desks. But again, um, given the amount of money that you're spending, I'm trying to keep people from spending more than 50 or $60 total. Um, so if you did need to resort to something like this, really keep in mind that this is not a, long-term solution, even over a few weeks, I would not recommend you spend a full day in your bed using this, but if you needed a substitute, or if your kids are at home right now, I know Dr. Hack's gonna touch on that in a few. Um, if your kids are at home right now, um, this could be a part-time temporary solution for the younger kids who really just wanna do their reading homework or digital homework right now in their bed, because again, we don't have a lot of space accommodated for them right now. Um, <clears throat> And then again, going into monitor, uh, sorry, we touched on the, on the uh, laptops and using the table, but for a lot of people, I would highly advise that if you are using a, um, if you're using a laptop, you definitely want to consider maybe having an additional keyboard and having your monitor or your, your, sorry, your laptop function as a monitor and have it propped up on a stand. Uh, that will definitely allow you to have better eye level height because um, even with the solutions that I've just recommended, you're still going to end up finding that your neck angle is, um, is definitely overly flexed and, and not very helpful for your neck and shoulders. Okay. So for those of you, I know I mentioned a couple of things that you could, oh, actually, wait, I didn't show you guys here. I'll just quickly show you guys um, what a what a monitor riser would look like. Again, lots of stores will sell this. I just wanted to give you guys an example. Sorry, my internet's deciding to be slow. Here we go. I just wanted to give you guys an example of what something like would look like. It just allows it to function as a monitor. So again, this option is really useful if you have an additional keyboard. Um, and keyboards, again, you can get like $10 keyboards. They're fairly inexpensive and definitely worth it if your job requires you to be on a computer for the majority of the day. And sorry guys, let me just go back into presentation mode here. Uh, what happened here? <clears throat> Okay, and uh, going into some DIY items that you can use at home. Uh, so if you don't want to spend any money, I hear you. I totally understand that right now. So for those of you that don't want to buy a riser but need to raise your monitor height up, you can use, you know, boxes of your Amazon shipments as an option. Uh, for those of you that need to make a lumbar roll for your back, just roll up a towel. That's another great way to uh, produce a more natural spinal curve. Um, and we talked about foot rest, so, or uh, sorry, thigh to leg angles. If you find that that, that knee, um, that you're not able to make a perpendicular angle between your thigh and your knee, you can also use a foot rest. And if it's something that you don't have lying around at home, you can try a recycling bin, a couple of books. Um, anything just to basically take some of the pressure off your um, off your hips would be really, really helpful to alleviate some of the tension in your back. Okay, so I'm gonna go over two quick resets. And then uh, actually, before I do that though, Dr. Hack, did you wanna quickly chime in just about kids right now and what they're experiencing you know, in terms of homeschooling and, and ergonomics there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is something you and I had talked about last night. Um, but given that school's out and we don't really know how long school is going to be out for, um, one of the things for us to consider also is, is our kids and um, as they're doing a little bit more work at home than they are traditionally have been, um, looking at their ergonomics as well because they're not immune to feeling the strains um, in their necks, in their backs. Um, they're no different than, than we are in, uh, from that perspective. Um, and so it's something for us to have a look at. And, and Dr. Sharam, I don't know if you have any specific recommendations around um, children and how we can set up um, sort of their, uh, their workstations, because not all kids have a set desk at home, um, and what the things we should be considering that should be different for our kids are. No, absolutely. And I think, you know, the biggest things that I see with kids, and Dr. Dupuy will, Dupuy will also um, 
chime in on this too, uh, is in, you see a lot of kids right now on their devices, necks tilted down, curled into a ball. Uh, we definitely want to support them right now and making sure that they can at bare minimum of what it is that they're using to work off of, trying to maintain eye level. And this is different for every kid. Like right now, my son is three years old and he's doing virtual consults with his speech language therapist and, you know, having to, you know, have him hold an iPad to do a session versus having it propped up, having him have to sit on a lot of cushions to get him at eye level makes a big difference. And um, I don't know, did you have anything else that you wanted to add, Dr. Uh, Dupree? Yeah, I was just going to suggest as well, if your kids are looking to have sort of break time or their play time, maybe avoiding screen time just for the time being, since they're having to use their screen so much more for at home study and homework, maybe encouraging them to do puzzles or go for walks or just not using screens as a break time right now. A hundred percent. So talking about all of us looking at this amazing presentation and chiming in, I wanted to do a quick reset. There's two resets that I'm going to do. And then uh, Dr. Dupuis is going to show us a couple of amazing stretches as well. Uh, but a quick digital um, uh, eye reset is super healthy for all of us. What it basically means is a 20-20-20 rule. You want to spend about uh, 20 seconds, sorry, you want to spend 20 seconds to take a break from your monitor, find something about 20 feet away uh, and focus on that for about sorry focus on that for 20 seconds every 20 minutes so that 20 20 20 rule is really great especially if you're someone who suffers from tension headaches who suffers from a lot of jaw pain if you're a clencher uh, this is really important and if you're also somebody who who inadvertently finds themselves dropping their neck forward this is a great reset tool um, and hopefully you know you guys can practice that right now so take your eyes away from my monitor or from the monitor uh, look about 20 feet away. And after about 20 seconds, you can return to your monitor and do that about every 20 minutes. Um, another really fun and easy reset. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stop the share for just a sec so you guys can see me here. Can you all see me? All right. So another another really great reset that we can all do. We talked about our elbow angles being at 90 degrees and we're typing away. A quick and easy, simple reset if you're doing the eye reset at the same time. Bring your palms up and squeeze between your shoulder blades. And this is a great simple reset which will allow your shoulders to pull back. It allows your neck to align back in line with your shoulders. And it just gives you a little bit of a boost, um, something that's simple and easy for all of us to do. And it's a great reminder because when we're kind of stuck in this posture for so long, it's a little intimidating to want to sit there and start doing exercises and movements to, to work on improving our posture. And right now I get it, stress and tension's at a high time right now. So instead, let's just do a quick reset, 20 seconds, and we can hold that. So that's a good uh, reset that you can do at the same time as your, uh, as your eye reset. Now, Dr. Dupree, give us a couple of stretches. I know you have some good ones. Yeah, so it's really important also right now just to maintain the mobility that you have in your neck. I'm sure many of you have heard the phrase, use it or lose it, and this applies right now. So really using your neck ranges of motion. So looking over both shoulders, bending your ears to sort of both sides, maybe looking down to your opposite hip, giving yourself a little stretch as well as wrist mobility. So I really want you to roll out your wrists after typing a lot or giving your forearms a stretch by either pulling down on your arm or your hand, I should say, or up on your hand. This really stretches out the forearm muscles and this is a good break for those muscles as well when you're doing your reset. Amazing, amazing. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this presentation here. You guys have been super, uh... Super dedicated, I love this. Okay, so we're almost actually done here. Um, hang on here, sorry you guys. Okay, so now for those of you who feel really confined to your home and are just trying to figure out your new normal with your work life routine and trying to figure out how to work from home effectively with kids being home and everything else. A lot of you have been having questions about what is allowed for activity versus what isn't. And I couldn't think of a better person to answer this since Dr. Hack is actually in isolation, whereas most of us are still practicing social distancing. So can you tell us what our, what, cause we all are advocating for physical fitness right now. We don't want this to stop because stress levels are already at a high right now. So what are some good activities um, for action, for, sorry, what are some good options for activities that people can do if they're in either situation? 
Yeah, absolutely. So I think the, the most important piece first is to just be really clear in terms of what the definition between social, social distancing and social isolation is. Um, social distancing is what, what almost everyone's doing right now in the sense of um, really not going into large group events, um, avoiding public places, um, and trying to stay um, a safe distance from others. And that safe distance is deemed as six feet. Um, and so um, there are a number of us who are also um, in what's called social isolation. And what that means is we cannot physically for 14 days leave our house. The two main reasons for that would include um, either recent travel anywhere else side of Canada or patients who are um, symptomatic or who have been in contact with a known coronavirus case. Um, obviously the restrictions in terms of um, activity availability is going to be different for people who are in isolation versus people who are social distancing. Um, unfortunately for most people who are very active all of the gyms um, fitness studios are closed right now so people who are used to going to the gym for their fitness um, that's no longer an option. The nice thing is the outdoors is still very much available to us. So anyone that's social distancing, getting outside, really important. Um, not only for our physical health, but also our mental health and well-being. Um, so what that means is you can still get out and go for a run. You can still get out and go for a bike ride. Um, you can still get out and go for a brisk walk. Um, you can still get out to the park um, and throw around a baseball. Um, you can still get out to the park and shoot hoops. Um, lots of outdoor activities available. Um, for people like myself who are currently socially isolated, um, yes, we can't get outside to the same degree. If you're following the current rules, maybe getting outside to your backyard um, or your balcony is an option, but beyond that, it's really difficult. Um, the nice thing is that there are a lot of online options and there are a lot of things that you can still do in your home. Um, a lot of fitness studios um, have now free online videos. Um, there are a lot of also platforms and, and even YouTube videos that you can access completely for free um, for yourself and for your family that you can do at home. Um, anywhere ranging from really straightforward 10 minute stretching videos um, all the way up to, you know, hour and a half intense cardio hit type videos. Um, a quick Google search will land you on probably a number of videos. One of my personal favorites, um, and again, I have no stake in them, um, is, a, is a company called Fitness Blender that runs free videos for YouTube. Um, and you can even download videos that you can do as a family. Myself and my kids did a uh, kids Fitness Blender 26 minute video the other day in an effort to get us all moving. Um, and it was great. Um, so there's lots of options to be able to do both inside and outside, but for those of you who can get outside, I encourage you to get outside, um, but just stay within a safe distance of, um, of others. Amazing. So guys, so it sounds like there's lots of options and I know, you know, we're always encouraging everyone to be active and I think it's really important too for our workstation, um, you know, situation right now at home, especially given that they're not ideal or ergonomic. This is especially important and critical that we all follow some exercise, uh, hopefully even every day. Any other tips and tricks, Dr. Dupuy? Yeah, so a couple additional tips and tricks that you can consider while you're working from home. As Dr. Sapna mentioned, it's really important to move off often and one of the recommendations is about every 20 minutes. So if you're someone who gets really invested in what they're doing and kind of forgets that you're in a slouched posture for a long time, it's recommended that you set a timer for yourself, whether on your computer or on your phone, just to give you that alert reminder that it's time to get up and stretch. Also, your body will cue you. So if you're sitting in a slouch position like this for a long time, your shoulders are up near your ears, you're going to start to feel tension in your upper back shoulders, maybe in your neck. That's your body's way of telling you that it is time to change up your position. As we mentioned, there are ideal postures for you to sit in, but the most important thing is that you're moving and your next position is really your best position. Even if you're sitting in the ideal posture, if you're doing that all day long, you still are putting a lot of tension on those tissues. We just want to be changing it up to give those tissues a break and using other tissues. So another tip I like to give my patients, if they're noticing that they're finding it difficult to sit in a neutral spine, and they're noticing a rounded low back is to scoot your bum towards the front of your chair. So you actually move really forward on your chair. You plant your feet flat on the ground in front of you. This is really going to help align your spine and your pelvis. And it's also going to give you an active core. What this is going to do is just basically, if you think of your spine as building blocks, one on top of the other, this is going to put it in its neutral position and it's going to give all of the muscles, ligaments, everything, their optimal position that you want to spend the majority of your time in. Last but not least, important whether you're at home or at work is to stay hydrated. Your muscles are made up 
a big majority of them by water. And if you keep them hydrated, they're gonna be at less risk of tensing up and um, reducing your chance of injury. Amazing, thank you so much. Okay, so, uh, you know, we all, uh, <laughs> We are all basically, you know, um, feeling like victims of quarantine. And, you know, for us, I think the biggest takeaway is we don't want you to feel alone. Now, before we kind of get into a next part, I see there's a couple of Q and A's here. Uh, Krista, did you want to take some of these questions? I Oh, I can open them here. Um, okay, so... Uh, Okay, so here's a good question. I'd love some suggestions on what to do when armrests on the chair are too wide. Uh, do you want to jump in on that one, Dr. Dupuy? So too wide being, um, if, if your chair is not adjustable, I would suggest doing what I just recommended by sort of bringing yourself forward on your chair and that you're sort of not even using the armrests. That way you're able to actually put your arms by your side at that 90 degree angle because they'll, the armrests will now be behind you. And also, and you're if still you're able to maintain, it. yeah, and if you can move your chair up and down as well, that might help situate your elbows and wrists in a better position. Whether you need to go up to meet your table or go down. Amazing. Um, now, there's a question just about in general. If you are somebody, maybe I'll, I'll I'll turn this one over to you, Dr. Hack. If there are people who have medical conditions like inflammatory, um, arthritic conditions, or things like that, uh, the question is. Uh, do you have any extra suggestions? Uh, I use intensive medicine, just you know, in terms of what people who do have, um, you know, less are more sedentary now. Do you have any additional recommendations? Sorry, can you clarify meaning um, around exercise options? Or, yeah, I guess I guess that's what this person's hoping to figure out is they they have rheumatoid arthritis and they just want to know if there's any extra suggestions. I'm assuming around just the fact that they are more sedentary, they might be experiencing more flare-ups. Um, you know, obviously telemedicine consults are great for this, but any additional things that you would add? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think staying active is really important. Um, to your point, when you're when you're sitting for longer periods of time, that can absolutely cause a flare in symptoms, and and I don't think it makes it any better. Um, here's where actually getting um, a personalized consult might be worthwhile, um, both with um, with your regular care provider as well as potentially with one of the physios or chiropractors, and do a virtual consult um, because I think. Each individual person has unique needs. Um, I think um, depending on what the where where the pain points are and what the underlying condition is, um, having someone be able to tailor a program and recommendations specifically for you is really important. Um, and so there's no way of answering it sort of in a in a broad sense. Um, I, I would say that there are absolutely things that you're going to be able to do. I think it's just making it sure that it's sort of more guided and tailored um, to what potentially your specific needs are. Exactly. And I think too, and even just a few of the people asking about standing desk, same kind of token, yeah. like we're really trying to maintain eye level. We're trying to minimize neck flexion. We're trying to minimize, you know, shoulders being raised up or awkward uh, wrist mechanics. So we similar, we're kind of all going to share similar thoughts on we're really okay with a lot of, uh, with a lot of different um, positions, as long as we can maintain some of the key points of where we want our bodies and mechanics to, to be and look like, um, then, you know, we're doing okay. We're doing better than, you know, what we would expect. Um, now, uh, um, just our overall, just in terms of our overall, we're all working from home. So Dr. Hack, obviously, you know, we all have our kids here. No, we're good. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> okay, Apparently an iPad let out. Okay. My, my daughter really wanted to join this webinar as well. She wanted to be the, the child model. Um, so in terms, of, in terms of just, you know, where we're going to leave this off is, you know, we have a really strong virtual community. We thank you all for all your support. Um, you know, we're here to support you. It's only been a week and I already can see people escalating and having more questions and needing more assistance and help. And obviously, you know, we're making, we're making up as much content as we can based on what's relevant, based on what we're getting from you guys. Um, but we don't want you to pull your, put your needs off. Obviously the telemedicine is still a hundred percent available to you guys, but we also have telewellness. Um, you know, our virtual wellness needs are growing and expanding. We keep adding services on just to help you guys. So take advantage of it. It's on our website. You can see all the different services uh, more specifically because a lot of you have tailored custom needs um, you know we're spending the same amount of time as an initial new patient exam and uh, charging it at the same rate as a follow-up so we are you know we're just making sure that you guys have the time for us to see your organization. 
So if you guys wanted to take advantage of it, it's something that is covered through your benefits. I'm not the only one offering it. Dr. Jaqui is offering it. Our physios are offering it. So definitely take advantage of it. Um, it'll be a useful tool for some of you that have some more unique and specific uh, questions and and, and things that you want us to look at. Um, because it is hard, we try to kind of come up with the most typical or common uh, scenarios that you might be faced with based on your living accommodations. But yeah, like in, in terms of additional support, uh, we're here for you and, you know, definitely ask us anything that you need. You can email us and call us and, you know, we're definitely here to support you. Uh, do you guys have anything else to add before we wrap up? Uh, Dr. Sapna, I will just answer. We got another clarifying question on the answer I gave before on the elbow support. One of the main things that you want to just avoid is having sure. your elbow so high that it brings your shoulders up towards your ears. You want to make sure that your that your shoulders can sit neutrally away from your ears. So if that means that your forearms are resting on the table, fine. If not, if the, if your elbows have to dangle off the back of your um, on the back of your desk, that's totally fine. You just want to maintain that 90 degree and avoid this, whatever that means for you. And I know some people had clarifying questions too, just about um, how to access telemedicine. So telemedicine right now, if you guys are visiting our website, because some of you had specific questions just about medical conditions and things that might be more unique and specific to you. Um, our website, as soon as you go on there, before you even do anything, we've got a little pop up here. It'll explain how you can make these appointments. And um, if you did, like I said, if you did want to sort of navigate over our, to our online booking portal, for our, our mental health rehab practitioners and um, uh, our naturopath, you can find that. I don't know why my internet's been slow, but you can find that in the um, in the wellness section. It'll pop up. Oh, I apparently don't have internet. Okay. Well, anyways, hopefully that gives you a good way of finding um, of finding us, and it will take you to something that looks like this. So, any other questions? Let us know. And before we leave, type ten in the chat box if you found that hopefully helpful and engaging and you're going to take away at least one or two tips that you can uh, use at your current home workstation. Awesome. Yay. Thanks guys. That's so exciting. Great. And um, some of you, some of you might hopefully want a copy of this presentation. Type 10 if you guys want us to give you a downloaded copy of today's presentation. Okay. All right. So we will definitely make this content available to you. Uh, obviously, feel free, share it to whoever you think can benefit from it. We're, we're not holding this content hostage by any means. So we want everyone to benefit and learn from this. Um, so thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, Dr. Hack. You're so busy. We appreciate your time. Thank it's you. my pleasure. I learned a ton, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, hopefully we all can like use some of these tips. So everyone enjoy the rest of your Monday. It's, the days are all a fog now. I think it's Monday. Enjoy your Monday and uh, stay tuned. Uh, tomorrow, we actually have a mental health webinar uh, being hosted twice. And uh, it will feature one of our mental health uh, psychotherapists, Nell Wanga. Uh, and also we have in each webinar panel, we've got a couple of our uh, physicians joining us as well. So Dr. Saheb Masoor is joining us. Dr. Erica West is joining us. Dr. Hema Patel is joining us tomorrow. Uh, and Dr. Sarah Cook is uh, joining us tomorrow for that. And then on Wednesday uh, we also have COVID and kids so we were blown away last week when we hosted COVID uh, Q&A so now we're going to be doing COVID kids Q&A Dr. Hack is going to be on this once again with her kids maybe in the background maybe <laughs> hopefully not <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we also have Dr. Masur joining you for that one and Dr. Kegel joining you for that one as well. So guys, we've got so much content lined up. We can't wait to share it with you. Um, so yeah, thanks again for being here today and we'll see you all hopefully again tomorrow and you'll get the links for tomorrow's webinars uh, shortly as well. Bye guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.